this is your first combine as a GM. Do you feel differently? Do you do you have to make time for people and get to know agents better? Because in the past you were more behind the scenes. Now you're the out front guy for the Jets. Yes, all of the above. Yeah, so it's it's definitely you go from uh, kind of a situation where you're a little more uh, behind the scenes, and now obviously your day gets much more filled with. Uh, you know, obviously interviews with the press um, and stuff like that, which is their press conference today. So, uh, yeah, that, that tends to be a lot more going on. Plus, the other part of it is the agent aspect of it where you're constantly uh, meeting with agents down here. So, Now, when you ultimately make a decision on who you draft, how much did the combine influence you on that decision? Uh, you know, it's a, it's a piece to the puzzle um, or a part of the process. Um, it it, uh, it does give us an environment where we can kind of view all the players in the same the same environment in terms of how big, fast, strong, and quick they are. They do drill work, obviously all the same drill work one after the other. Um, we do get a chance to interview these guys both informally and in formal interview environments. We do have uh, you know various profile testing services that uh, a lot of teams use down here, and we use some too. Um, so at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's, it's a part of the puzzle. It's a very important part, I do believe, since it, it's sort of the, you know, the best way to kind of line them up, you know, one, two, three, four, five, how they perform in this environment. It's not the do-all, the end-all in terms of how we rate them, um, but it's definitely an important part to the puzzle where players can really, you know, sort of help their stock and, and um, you know, in this, in this kind of environment. Now, when we had you and Coach Bowles on the day you guys got officially hired, we asked you about specific things about this team. You said we really haven't looked at all of the tape. I'm sure you have now, and the question that all Jet fans have is Geno Smith, your quarterback, moving forward. Well, I would say simply, uh, and, and Todd and I have sort of taken the same approach, um, you know, Geno is obviously, you know, under contract with us. Um, you know, I would say as we go forward, we'll get a better feel for what Geno is in terms of, uh, you know, the off-season work with him when we eventually get to that stage of the process. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, like, we, you know, the team has invested a second-round draft pick on him. Or in him, and we would, you know, we're going to do everything with our powers to, to evaluate him, but also see, uh, you know, what he can become as a player in terms of the potential he can potentially fulfill. So to sit there and say if he's our starter or a backup or a quarterback of the future, it's just way too early in that process. But, you know, obviously Gino's under contract, and uh, we're going to do everything with our powers to, you know, see if we can help him develop and achieve his potential. But did you like anything that you saw on tape? Was it mostly negative stuff or positive stuff, Mike? No, I think I think there's there's a lot of good things on tape. I think the last game of the season is pretty indicative of um, you know some of the potential he has against Miami. Um, so I thought that was a very positive thing to end on. Now, obviously, as well, you put the whole body of work together, there are areas where um, you know he didn't uh, do quite as well. So I think as we sort of evaluate him going forward, um, it's kind of you know we're going to try to see what we can do to to make him be a, you know as successful as he can be. To kind of see what he had, what he is in terms of going forward, and and, and, I, and I mentioned this today earlier when I was talking to some of the uh, in my press conference, like players do develop at different rates. So um, it, I think it's still you know we'd like to kind of work with Gino and kind of see how he uh, develops and what he can potentially become. But I would be I would definitely say it'd be a little too early to you know anoint him per se because there's still a whole bunch of things we have to do with him in terms of working with him going forward. Now, Jameis Winston has not made the decision yet on whether he's going to go to the combine. Uh, well, that, throw at the combine. Uh, uh, what's that? Throw, throw at the combine. Right. Excuse me. Well, well that was like, that's a big deal. Um, would that affect you at all? Not just him, but just as any quarterback you're evaluating. Would that affect you negatively if a player decided not to throw at the combine? No, I think there's a long history of quarterbacks that throw and don't throw at the combine. Um, I think at the end of the day, you'd like to see them all in the same kind of environment, how they perform side by side, and, and kind of at the core of what we all do in, in the scouting side of things is you evaluate players. You know, you try to get, you know, you rank them from best to worst, so you try to get them in environments where you can kind of compare, you know, one to another. Um, but it, it, if, if he throws or doesn't throw at the combine, it, it doesn't, you know, again, it doesn't necessarily affect things dramatically. It's just an opportunity I always think the player doesn't take advantage of. So if he were to come here and throw and do well, obviously that would bode well for him. Um, and we'd like to see that. But at the end of the day, it's not to do all the end all. And, and for most of these quarterbacks, quite frankly, especially the higher profile quarterbacks and even some of the down the road type guys, um, you know, teams and, and ourselves included will be going to these guys' workouts. In some cases, we may have private workouts. All that's still to be determined. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's a long process. So Now, it's been reported that you are going to meet with Mariota and with, with Winston. Should we read anything into that, or are you just doing your due, due diligence? Well, we have the ability to interview 60 players at the Combine in a formal interview environment, and uh, those are a couple of, two of the 60 players – uh, we chose to interview, and then again, I think any team doing their due diligence would, you know, 
uh, would look at higher rated players that they would potentially think they're going to be part of you know their evaluation process or that the players are going to evaluate for the draft and uh, take this opportunity to talk to them. So, but we're interviewing the players at a, a myriad of positions, so it's not as if we're just locked in on. You know, I think at the end of the day, I think this is more common than than now the norm, quite frankly. How have talks gone with Wilkerson? I'm sorry. How have talks gone with Wilkerson? Uh, we haven't met with uh, his agent or representative yet. I think at some point in time here at the Indy Combine, we're going to sit down and do that, um, and then kind of see how that proceeds. So. Now your top free agent is David Harris, the linebacker. He's, uh, I think, he's 31 years old. Do you want to lock him up? Is he important to you? Uh, I would say we would very much like to get David back in the fold. Again, it's a, it's a process you go through when when players you know enter into you know a potential free agency and actually hit the market that you know to find kind of a you know a, a middle ground necessary point where both the player and the uh, and the agent and the team kind of feels comfortable with, you know, the compensation. And that's uh, the kind of process we're going to go through with David. We we definitely like David. We'd like very much to have David, you know, finish his career with the Jets. Uh, I think he's been a, a, a very good player for the Jets over a long period of time. And in a perfect world, we'd like to have him, um, you know, finish up his career here. You know, Mike, talking to coaches, they'll say, yeah, maybe it takes a year or two for it to become my team, you know, by the time you get everything in working order. Uh, what's the timetable for a general manager to really say you have made your complete stamp on this team? Well, I would say, I mean, the minute you take the job, I think every decision you make, um, you know, you're doing it with the intention of what's in the best interest of the team. I don't know. Um, you know, to me, there's so many things that go involved in this. I, I don't like the idea that one person sort of says, hey, this, you know, this is when, you know, um, this will be my team. Or you know, That seems very kind of, you know, I'm, I'm more of a team-oriented type player in terms of my approach right. to a lot of things. But, but I would say simply this, is, as time goes by, I mean, you know, like every person in my role, you make a lot of decisions. You're, you know, there's a lot of people that factor into this process and the decision-making process. But, um, you know, over time, um, you know, at some point in time, you know, you're going to, you know, you make a lot of decisions, and it, it, it's not necessarily your team. It's, you know, it's hopefully the Jets as an organization have success. So, now most people in your position don't want to do this, but do you think this is a big fix with the Jets, or could they be a playoff team next year well, or this I mean, coming I season? I think it's always a bit of a trap to kind of try to put a time frame on things. So, you know, our goal is to make the Jets a, a competitive team that can go out there and compete every every Sunday. Or any any time they take the field, and ideally compete for you know the playoffs, and then eventually the the Super Bowl. Now that being said, there's no time frame on this. This is kind of what every GM and every head coach in the NFL does. You take that approach. You just try to make you know stack good decision upon good decision. Eventually, um, you know hopefully you, you you reap benefits when you know the team takes the field and has success. So um, to put a time frame on it, it's you know how close or how far away we are. I think as we get into this process and. You know, our goal is to kind of just keep making sound decisions and build a good foundation so eventually we can go out and be competitive every time we play. 